uh, from the three hours that had been indicated to the Deputy President for today. Let us stick to the time so that we can be able to conclude this matter in good time, uh, in good time today. Now, Honorable Senators, uh, ladies and gentlemen, we will start with the clarifications um, sought from the first witness of the National Assembly, Honorable Mutuse. Thereafter, we will move to the second witness and conclude, and then we can now allow the National Assembly to call their third witness. Is uh, Honorable Mutuse present? Good. Present, Mr. Speaker. You'll be noting the questions and uh, the clarification sought from the Honorable Senators. The Honorable Senator Fernandi. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Just clarification, but since we had started yesterday with the word of the Lord, I want to leave to my brother, Ekomas Mute Mutuse, through you. In Proverbs 12, verses 22, the Lord detests lying lips, but he delights in those who is telling the truth. So, Mwishmua uh, Mutuse Ekomas, I leave you with that. My quick clarification, Chair, with your indulgence, one, by the time you are giving us that the wealth of the Deputy President was 5.2 billion Kenyan shillings that you allege has been acquired for the last two years, did you access the wealth declaration from, from EACC, number one? Number two, under the NCIC Act and in Mudama's case that the courts ruled, is shareholding part of the definition of the word incitement? Number three, in the matter of Kilifi Malindi Road, do you have any evidence to prove whether it is a private or a public road? And if it is either private or public, can you table the evidence or before the house? Number four, clarification on the issue of Justice Esther Minor. What is are you telling us that since the deputy president is the deputy president of the Republic of Kenya, does he, does he, he, does he not have a, 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 a right as a citizen of Kenya not to bring any complaint against any officer, including judicial uh, officers? Finally, on the update in quickly, on 1st October 10, 2024, Cabinet Secretary Mutua. Uh, Senator Kenyua. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker, sir. My question goes to Honorable Mutuse. Uh, Honorable Mutuse, was Treetop Hotel, Treetop Hotel, uh, was it available for acquisition? And, was, and if that is so, was there any law of procurement that was breached? Second one, what is the age of these DP's sons? Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Senator Fatuma Dule. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. My question first goes to uh, the council on the side of the deputy president. My question is on uh, attack on the national security. And knowing that uh, national intelligence, Mr. Speaker, is a critical organ of a government. And uh, the attack by the deputy president is a very serious one. And I've seen the video being played that uh, what the current president said when he was the deputy president is equal. And I heard also deputy president saying uh, I have learned from my boss. Does that answer the question of mis gross misconduct on the part of attack on the security? Number two, the issue of this inheriting the widow. We've been told a lot of stories here, but I really want to know, because we are Africans, matters of widows are very critical. Have you thought of looking for the family of the late... Uh, Gashagwa, just to clarify so many questions that are lingering around that particular family. I thank you. 
Senator Betis Akinyi. If you're in the first round, honorable senators, allow, allow others also to get an opportunity to seek clarification. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, sir. Uh, my clarification is uh, to the DP's uh, team. On a video that was played yesterday at uh, a relocation uh, point in Nairobi County, I wanted clarification from the DP's team on whether their client is aware that county governments are distinct governments? And if so, Honorable Speaker, did the DP consult with the county government of Nairobi over the challenges of relocation uh, at Kayole? And two, Honorable Speaker, there was a video that was played, either one or two, uh, involving a, a speech at either rally by His Excellency, the President of the Republic of Kenya. My question is, what was the essence of that video? And is it to show that two wrongs would make one right? Thank you. Senator Lelegwe. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. My clarification is to the witness of the National Assembly. Yesterday, during the cross-examination, the advocate uh, of the Deputy President, you asserted that you have identified several companies which you have no issues, and to which you do not attribute any misconduct in their dealings. Given this context, could you inform the necessity for including these companies in the present impeachment motion. Thank you. Senator Eddy. Mr. Speaker, thank you. Uh, I have uh, one question uh, for the witness in chief and uh, one clarity question for the Council for the Deputy President, and particularly uh, Council uh, Tom Sharia. So I'll start with the uh, Honorable Vutusa. Honorable Vutusa, may you help this House understand whether they, all the companies that you indicated are uh, for the sons and the spouse of the Deputy President? and whether you established how old they are and estimated the, the net worth of those companies. Did you manage to estimate the net worth of those companies and how did you do that? To the senior counsel, the counsel Tom Masharia, in the exploration of ground number four, you led this house to look at uh, the particulars of the coalition document, the coalition document and the coalition agreement. May you help us understand how we should interpret Article 91 of the Constitution and Article 232 of the Constitution with regards to your response on government being a company equal to having shares and not the country. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Senator Sek. Thank you, Honorable Speaker. My also question, the question also goes to Honorable Mukwise. Wanted to make a clarification on the issue of uh, Peterson Jomo, the advert, uh, uh, Avidavit, on the Olive uh, Garden Hotel, on the appointment of Julian uh, Jahenda as the secondary agent, 
and um, the letter to the Public Service Commission through the clerk of the National Assembly uh, by volume 8A, eight, uh, eight page 1, gives a different person by the name Maka Juliana Jahenda. Why do we have different names here? You need to clarify because it has a different person altogether, two different people altogether. Second clarification is on the issue of the award of the tender on the proposed refurbishment of the DP's residence in Karen. Honorable Mutuse, the government, through the uh, State House controller, signed that contract, wanted to know what is the relationship of this contract with the DP. Now that you're saying it has some issues, why, what, what's all about the contract and the, 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 the company that did that refurbishment? We need to know what is the relationship and what is, or how, what is the malpractice that has been Senator Amida Kibwan. Uh, Mr. Speaker, uh, sorry, my question was for Dr. Mulua. Senator Wakili Sige. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I've got two questions. One to the Council for the Deputy President, and the other one, actually both, uh, for clarification by the Council for the Deputy President. Um, yesterday, in the course of your cross-examination, you took us to page 410 of volume three. This is with regard to the accusation where His Excellency the Deputy President uh, divulged or accused the national intelligence uh, of uh, what you say. Now, my clarification from you, which I desire, is at that page 410, the evidence which you sought to juxtapose what the President did and what the Deputy President was accused of having done is with regards to one being in office and another one alleging that he's not been able to attend sessions where that complaint came from. Give us the correlation of the two. And secondly, I share the sentiments by all the senators who've sought to get from you an understanding about the coalition agreements. You attempted to explain yesterday the relationship between company shares and coalition agreement shares. You were asked about the place of this in terms of the regimes of the two kinds of agreements. What do you say as regards shares in a company registered under the Companies Act vis-a-vis post-election coalition agreements registered under the Political Parties Act and the governance of Senator Batuli Betty Montet. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker, sir. Mr. Speaker, sir, I want to ask uh, Honorable Mutuse, uh, is there a minimum age of uh, a client in a bank to get a loan of 700 million? Senator S.C. Okenyuri. Uh, sorry, Mr. Speaker, my question, I'm awaiting Dr. Andrew Mulwa. Senator Chariot Aaron. Mike. Uh, two quick questions to uh, you, Mutusa. Is there any crime that a Kenyan will have committed 
if they have 20, 30, or even 40 companies? Because I see you have listed 22 companies here. Is there any crime by just owning uh, these companies you feel that the person you accuse has committed? Second, on this issue of uh, Vipingo Beach, surely, uh, Honorable Mutuse, what is the crime of the sons of the deputy president being listed as directors? Because I have tried combing through your motion to establish what you consider to be either an illegality or a crime on their part by simply being listed as directors. Lastly, Mr. Speaker, is to the counsel for the DP, um, uh, Wakili Masharia. The clips of the then DP Ruto played by your team, could we read it to mean that it's an admission on your part that you're saying, if it was done then by a sitting deputy president, please allow the current one to commit the same uh, at this uh, point. And lastly, the 30% allocation to Ford Kenya uh, in the coalition agreement in ANC, how has it been realized? Senator Margaret Kamar. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker, for giving me the opportunity. I have one small question for Honorable Mluse, and that is on the witness, uh, uh, somebody who, by the name Peterson Njomo Mushira, who wrote an avid an affidavit, also an affidavit that touches on Olive Garden Hotel. He, has, he offered himself to appear and, pre, and be cross-examined on the content of his affidavit. Was he invited? Senator Kathuri Murungi. Uh, thank you, Honorable Speaker. Uh, mine are just very strict uh, clarifications. Uh, number one goes to Honorable Mutuse. Honorable Mutuse, in uh, Ground 7, you have seen that uh, His Excellency, the Deputy President, has inexplicably a master humongous, you know these are very strong ones, property portfolio estimated at 5.2 billion. So my question is, uh, uh, this is within two years. I know for a fact that before an election, any eligible candidate clears himself or herself with the IBC before contesting. Therefore, for comparative analysis, do you have His Excellency, the deep Deputy President's uh, uh, property or worth? during the 2022, before the 2022 elections, so that now we can be able, as a jury, can be able to compare and see whether for two years, for sure, he has been able to amass this wealth. Number two, there is this property in Meru. Uh, many Meru, Meru uh, guys have called me to the last night asking me whether there is evidence to show that this land is in, uh, in Meru. The last one is with, to the councils of the deputy president. Uh, there was a clip which was played here yesterday when the deputy president made a press conference in Mombasa, immediately after the president did this in Nairobi, two different cities. Therefore, I did not get clarity from the councils about this, uh, the, the question or the clip. So I was really requesting that one of them could be able to expound on that co controversy between the two pressers in two different cities by the two, the principal and the deputy principal of the Republic of Kenya. Thank you. Senator Okoit Omtata. Okay, thank you, Honorable Speaker. I have a, a question for the Honorable Mutuse. Uh, to, whose, to whom does this motion belong? Because in most of your answers, you keep on saying we. I think Honorable Senator Mtata, that question was uh, asked by the Honorable Enoch Senator. 
and okay. it was responded to. So just uh, ask for a different uh, clarification. Okay, and uh, other than that, I wanted to ask whether Honorable Mutuze knows the difference between an impeachment motion and a censor motion. And if he does, where does he place his motion? Is it a censor motion or is it an impeachment motion? And what are the thresholds for each of those two motions? If he understands the difference. Thank you. Senator Chu. Sana, Mwishimuwa Speaker, Mwishimuwa Mutuse, unileta ushaidi hapa mbele ya Senate, ukidai ya kuwa, Deputy President, hakuwa na 5.2 billion, <coughs> weni wakili, 